Hi everyone and welcome back to the Hobby Dude 007 channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at metal finishes, so stick around. Natural metal finishes can add a great element of realism to any project. This Ross Gibson 572 engine and transmission are a great example of that. I painted, the, and this is all done with all clad. The block is steel. The heads are dark aluminum. The exhaust manifold is magnesium. The fuel injector hat is polished aluminum, the front cover and pulley mounts are airframe aluminum, and the transmission is white aluminum and stainless steel. Now, depending on what your base is, in other words, your whether you, your base is a gray or white primer, uh, gloss white or gloss black, you can use the same color and get four different looks. It just depends on that base. Um, what we're going to look at today is doing these things, finding the colors you want, building a palette, as well as how they can enhance several of the cars. Let's take a look at a few other projects. All of the chrome on this DTR Sprint car was stripped and redone. The valve covers and the intake were all done in uh, aluminum over a flat finish and you see how that turned out which was great for what I wanted. The fuel cell was also polished aluminum and it was also over a white primer, a white flat primer. The wheels were polished aluminum. The instrument panel was actually matte finish bare metal foil. And here you see all of the parts that are painted and everything, it, while some of it looks chrome, is actually polished aluminum. And the great thing with that is, here we'll see these headers, how I just took a dry brush and just heat stained them very lightly in spots and smutted up the ends of the exhaust just slightly. I wanted to have more of a, I guess, a show car look. The front nerf bar and the, and the uh, excuse me, shock absorbers you see here. And here's our finished product. And I think it really enhanced it quite a bit. Now this 53 Corvette is totally out of box and all the chrome was stripped because it just didn't look scale. So I went back and did it all in bare metal, or excuse me, in uh, all clad chrome, and I think it turned out really good. Now this GTO, the bumper is all clad chrome, the grill, all of the grill work is polished aluminum, and then there's a wash down in there, and as you see, it turned out very nicely. Around window trim, my favorite has always been bare metal foil. It always seems to give me the best effect. But of course, everybody, we all have our own way of doing things. And whatever works for you is the way to do it. And under the hood, you see I stripped everything there too. The breather caps on the three deuces are uh, polished aluminum, as are the valve covers. And I think it really turned out well. This fuel injected in my 39 Ford drag car um, is predominantly everything with the exception of uh, the injector plate is polished aluminum and the injector plate is cast iron. Next, we're going to look at a, a project that I've been working on and off for probably 25 years, uh, but it's a fab shop car, a uh, NASCAR that is just kind of under construction. I know Luca C did something like this too. Great minds. But uh, this is um, actually buffing metalizer from testers to do the dash and the uh, back uh, bulkhead back here. And I always like to use magnesium, all clad magnesium, to do the frame and the uh, roll cage, things like that. And then you can go back with just a touch of uh, smoke and a little bit of um, the all clad amber and go back after that with just a fine tip brush and put some tester silver around it to create great looking welds. Also, I like to use that matte finish bare metal foil as you see here in a lot of areas. It really gives it a really, really good effect. The buffing metalizers from testers are soon going to be gone with the Model Master line being taken out. 
Uh, and that's kind of a shame because I still use and still like those quite a bit. Well, let's get over here and take a look at uh, applying some of these finishes. Don't miss out on any upcoming content. Subscribe to the Hobby Dude 007 channel now. Or this spider will dance across your next fresh paint job. Ah! No plastic insects were harmed during the production of this video. Several adults, however, should have been busted upside the head. Twice. Thank you for your support. Depending on what we're painting, you can apply metal finishes in a lot of different ways. I have used just a simple toothpick. Um, micro brushes are great for even dry brushing. These things are awesome. Uh, they do a really great job. When it comes to dry brushing or putting any kind of finish on, any brush you can use to dry brush. My favorite, however, uh, personally, are the Micromark dry brush set. Uh, it comes in the different tips, two, four, six, and eight. And these things are awesome. This set of brushes is probably 10 years old. And you can get these online, and they are just awesome for doing your dry brushing. Very durable. Um, when it comes to applying most metal finishes, I like to use my airbrushes. Um, I have two that I like to use uh, for about everything. This Pache is a little over 30 years old, and it has been my workhorse. You can see by how worn out the tip is. I've changed I don't know how many needles because I'm one of those that Murphy's Law comes into effect. If I'm going to drop it, it's going to land right on the tip and bend the needle. But depending on the paint, you might want to change that out to the 1-3 or the 5. I usually keep the number 3 tip in it, uh, but you can change that. The Pache is a siphon feed, so you can change this out. It is a little more to clean, but it does an awesome, awesome job. I usually paint my bodies with this. Um, eh, there's a number of things. Now, when it comes to the metal finishes, the all clad, my preference has been my a Water Revolution. It is a gravity feed, so it's a lot easier to clean. Uh, as you can see, that's a, a really good feeling paintbrush, too. And... As far as airbrushes go, I prefer the double action. I've seen some outstanding jobs done with the uh, single actions. And you can still adjust those, but you can do this one on the fly. Uh, with a double action, if you're not familiar with airbrushes, with a double action airbrush, what that means is you've got basically a trigger here. Um, in the forward position, if you push down, you just get a flow of air out. That air, you can dust off a little bit before you start painting. Uh, but with a double action as you start to slide your finger back, you get a little bit of paint, a little bit of paint. And as you come on back, you're going to get a broader, heavier coat of paint. So if you want to get up inside, let's say, a grill and just put a little bit down and build it up so it's even with the rest of the vehicle, then you just start off a little bit at a time in this little, little crevice and then uh, work it up as you get to the main part of the body. Um, Really, really good airbrush. And I use a lot of these. Someone asked in one of the other videos how I decant paint. And one of the other ways to apply any metal finish is with uh, a spray can. And there's some great ones out there. Duplicolor and Plasticoat both make some great metal finishes. Uh, Tamiya, this is one of my favorites of theirs, and that's the Silver Leaf. Really good stuff. Um, but I'm getting ahead of myself there a minute. When it comes to an airbrush, you can, where with the spray can, you can't control the amount of paint that comes out. Whereas with an airbrush, you can. Is there a way to use this in this? Absolutely. We're going to decant the paint. Someone asked, and I'm going to show you real quick how to do that, uh, or, or show you how I do it anyway. Um, what I do is I take some of the regular old bendable straws there, and then I'll cut this to a length that's going to go into the bottle. And I use Silly Putty, but I have used tape. And you put that, as you see, it fits right over the nozzle. And tape that on or put your Silly Putty on there. Make sure you shake it up real good. Then put this down into, well, I might have cut that a little short, down into your bottle. And then you just spray. And as you're doing that, of course, your paint is going to flow. Oops. Your paint is going to just flow right out and down into your uh, your container. 
I use anything from medicine bottles to, to, to paint bottles. It just depends. Um, but that's just how easy it is. So, let's see here. That's, that's my favorite way of applying these metal finishes. And if you guys have any other methods for applying finishes or finishes you, you think I might like, by all means, put it in the comment section. I've tried the Gunzy and, and a lot of other brands, and there's a lot of them I really, really like. I tend to, as I said before, stick to what works for me because what works for one may not be eh, all that great for someone else. Um... But let's go over now and look at how to build a color palette. So when we're looking for that unique color uh, for a metal finish, how we can do that without experimenting on our actual project. I'll show you how I did it anyway. So what I did to get me a good color palette, because honestly, under different or over different primers, you're going to find that all clad testers, model master, a lot of these different brands, um, Gunsy, all of these are going to have a different tone depending on the primer that's under them. Now I take clear plastic spoons, uh, then I prime them, and I usually prime them with either white or gray sandable plastic coat primer. And this is just my preference. Y'all may have your your own favorite primer, and that's great. Uh, but then I go back and. I'll use Duplicolor's sealer. It's a good primer sealer, and it, uh, as it says, seals prime surfaces and improves gloss. And I'll hit that with about a thousand, uh, two thousand uh, grit sandpaper, got to kind of get a good smooth surface ready for the paint. But what I do for the metal is I'll start off, and I shot all these in uh, a primer. This, then I went back and put a gloss black, and this is testers, and then I put a uh, Tamiya semi-gloss just white primer, gray primer. Then I started doing this on one spoon, gray and white on both sides. I don't know where my gloss white one is, but we'll get to that in a minute. But after that, then I'll shoot these different colors and you'll see what I'm talking about here. When it comes to, uh, you're gonna get a difference. For example, and we're gonna start off with the all clads. These are both polished aluminum. One on the black and one on the flat finish. So you see there's a huge difference there. Of course, with a flat base, you're gonna get a flat finish. But with the gray, you got two different tones there. But this gives you an idea of what you're, what you're gonna be using. But then you've got the stainless steel in with the black, stainless steel with the gray, and you see the two different tones, and then stainless steel with a white. And look how much brighter, or lighter color that is than with the black so you've got um, four different looks and this is just the all clad stainless steel depending on what it is um, you're looking for but that gives you four dif different tones uh, airframe aluminum one of the biggest ones i love airframe aluminum this is great this has got the black and that is the white gloss white so you see there's a big difference there but it gives you two different effects with one color. Dark aluminum. That one, kind of the same. The over the white is a little bit different, but not too bad. Then white aluminum. That one is pretty much the same on both of them. But you're not going to know till you actually try them. Dura aluminum. Little subtle difference there. Steel because it's dark it's kind of the same on both of them there may be just a slight um just a touch lighter on the white but almost unnoticeable uh the straight aluminum is the same on both the gray and the white but it's got a really beautiful finish and one of my all-time favorites is magnesium i use this when i'm doing welds and things like that and in addition to the uh, smoke colored this this is just really good stuff and under these, the base, a lot of people argue about the base. Well, my favorite base for the glosses is always been the black, especially for chrome polished aluminum, uh, the magnesium. I like to put down the testers 1247, just the regular gloss black. For me, that's been the, I get the best results with that. 
Uh, I have used Tamiya TS-14, and it, it, it's pretty good, but it tends to want to wipe off. And I've also used All Clad's Gloss Black Base, and for some reason I just haven't had a lot of good luck with that. It's a beautiful gloss black, but the finish over the top of it, I have the best results, like I said, using the testers. Uh, let's look at a couple others. These are the Tamiya Silver Leaf. This is just beautiful. That is just a great looking silver. And their bare metal uh, silver is really another one that looks pretty good. It's a little more, it's a little duller than the uh, Silver Leaf, but it does have a good metallic look to it, a good metallic finish. And Model Master's Buffing Metalizers, and these are getting harder and harder to come by, but stainless steel, and once you buff these out, as you can see, nothing's coming off of it but the buffing metalizer you can you can buff up you can see the lights in there reflecting to a beautiful shine uh this is their gun metal another one of my favorites and this stainless steel well let me show you this one first this is aluminum plate and that buffs out very nicely gets a good aluminum look really and I want to go back and look at these two stainlesses because this was kind of odd to me. This is these are both Model Master stainless over white primer, uh, and they're both the buffing metalizers. But you notice how much lighter this one is than this one. This one's out of a spray can, the lighter of the two, and then the airbrush is the darker. Hadn't figured that out yet, but you know. And uh, in other metal finishes. You've got a lot of other things you can use. Testers, uh, just the little bottles of uh, their regular silver, really good. This also comes in a steel. Uh, there's a lot of metallic colors you can get in them. There's copper. I use a copper a lot to do the wines that are in alternators, uh, and they turn out really, really good. Also, in the Testers Model Master line, you've got aluminum, and you notice how bright that is, and then you've got... Um, I think that one, yeah, stainless steel, a little bit darker, and you want to really have some fun with some stuff. There's brass, so you got a lot of metal finishes you can you can use. And when it comes to chrome, my Tony Nancy car, the only thing chrome on that car that I rechromed were the rims on the rear for the drag slicks and chrome and the valve covers. Everything else on that car is done in polished aluminum just a subtle enough difference on the barracuda i'm working on you got a chrome bumper and you've got that polished aluminum grill and even beside each other you can tell there is a difference there when it comes to chrome all around the windshield my all-time favorite has always been bare metal foil yes it's a little bit of work but it yields the best results also we've got molotov these things are great i've airbrushed them too and I'll stick with the all clad, but that's a personal preference again. You've got two, uh, three different tips that you can get when you get the set. And these yield a great chrome finish. And then you've got the uh, really fine tip. But these yield a really great, great finish for chrome too. Um, and there's a place for them. I, I use them for a variety of things. but um, Scripts, things like that when you're doing... Um, if you're going to do something out of box which I don't do that often, but if you are, then that's a really great thing to do. Now, my wife ran across this in a uh, craft store, and it's called Deco Color, and this thing is awesome. It's nowhere near this price, but honestly, the first time I used it, I think it was better, but you can see by the tip, it's just like, um, well, let's see here. Look at that, a chrome finish. Um, and it was much cheaper. And I don't remember if it was Michael's or Hobby Lobby or something like that, but you can see the, the name there. This was really good. I need to go back and see if I can find one in a finer tip. But as you can see there, got a great chrome look. Uh, great chrome look. And there are certain projects. Oh, in Sharpie, they have a paint pen too that's got a fine tip for your metal uh, surfaces and finishes. Now the only thing with this is after you shake it up you you have to like a lot of paint markers push down on the tip be really really careful with this. 
because I have had it flow, and I do mean flow right out of the tip. So do use caution, get you a paper towel or something, and uh, touch the edge before you do it. But this is a paint marker, not just a permanent marker. And speaking of Sharpies, we've also got uh, the Sharpies. I use this hot rod right here. I, I started to use the uh, bare metal foil around the windows and a lot of the trim. And it just didn't look right after I got the windshield done. So I went back, looked at the paint again, looked at the graphics, and I just took a silver Sharpie and just went around the windows. And it blended with the graphics on the car. It actually, to me anyway, it look, just looks better than it did with the chrome. So sometimes the metallic silver in the Sharpie just gives you a really good look. And they also come, and this one is bronze, so you get a good metal finish, uh, a bare metal look. And then you've got the gold. And someone told me there was another color out there that was a metallic, and I don't remember what it was right off. But these things are really great. There are all kinds of other brand paints, Gunsy. There's all kinds of really good stuff out there. Uh, and I challenge you to try them all. I try uh, as many as I can. I tend to stick with what works for me. And if you have your favorite paint, man, go for it. But uh, I love metallic finishes because they, they give a more realistic look. And when you put uh, different shades or tones with each other, just like that 572 engine, you just get a, a really good look. Uh, hope you've enjoyed this. I've had a blast with it uh, and look forward to doing more and more. Thanks for watching so much. Have a great one. We'll see you in the next video.